Welcome today to Living the Good Life with I and Betsy Tice. I kind of like the smoothness of that, the way it flows, that we are living the good life. And our encouragement for you today is that you too will be able to live the good life because you're walking as a righteous person and you're walking as a person with wisdom. We're reading today from the Jubilee Bible. The tongue of the just is as choice silver, but the understanding, Hebrew, the word is hard, of the wicked is worth little. Betsy, would you pick up from here? The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. Blessing of the Lord is that which makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. To make an abomination is a sport to the fool, but wisdom is recreation to the man of intelligence. The fear of the wicked, it shall come upon him, but God shall grant the desire of the righteous. When the whirlwind passeth, the wicked is no more, but the righteous is founded forever. As vinegar to the teeth and as smoke to the eyes, so is the sluggard to those that send him. The fear of the Lord shall be long days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. The hope of the righteous is joy, but the hope of the wicked shall perish. The way of the wicked is strength to the perfect, but it is terror to the workers of iniquity. The righteous eternally shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just shall bring forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue shall be cut out. The lips of the righteous shall know the will of God, but the mouth of the wicked speaks perversion. I want to share with you this morning something that you find very important, especially when we're reading Proverbs. Is it seems that much of it in the beginning is redundant. But I ask you to remind yourself that Solomon is talking to his sons and daughters. And if you're a parent, you know yourself that when you're speaking to the kids and you're telling them what to do, many times you have to repeat yourself time and time again, hoping that the, at least one time that their brain cells are in conjunction to hearing with what you're saying. Many times my wife as a teacher would ask the children to repeat back what she had just told them to find out if they really comprehended what she was saying to begin with. The same it is with Solomon speaking to his children. We're only covering the last 12 verses for this reason. But I want to touch on several verses. The tongue of the just is as toy silver, but the understanding of the wicked is worth living. And I think of today that we live in, and needless to say, it worries me. But I see a correlation of what Solomon was trying to impart back then what we are actually experiencing today. We see wickedness all over the place. We see it in governments. I'm not talking just about the United States. I'm talking about many nations around the world where it seems like the wicked seem to have everything. They're in charge. But the one thing that this passage of scripture is assuring those that live in righteousness is you are the ones with the great inheritance. Why? Because your inheritance is not that of silver and gold. Oh, those things may come upon you because of your willingness to serve the Lord and do what he says. But that isn't 
God's the blessing. That is not the main goal. But with the wicked, their main goal is to achieve the most for themselves, no matter who they destroy in the process. We see governments all over the world destroying the people that they are supposed to be serving for their own gain. Honey, would you like to add anything to this? I would only like to add that as we see so much lying uh, from every corner, of course it's worth little. Why would you believe a lie? Yeah. And loved ones today, we're, we're telling you this. Walk in righteousness, walk in wisdom. Why? Because those two virtues are eternal. Remember what the wicked is achieving even to this day, which you might be weary of because it seems to be stolen from you. That's the stuff that moth and rust does corrupt. It is not lasting. It will not last. Foolishness of man doesn't last. But the eternal wisdom and righteousness of God, he says in Scripture, that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. Old things will pass away, and behold, all things will become new. Now, whether that takes place here on this fiscal earth, restored, or whether it is something beyond our comprehension, they don't know. But I know that as long as I'm living in his eternal grace, in his eternal love, there is room for me to abound. And that's our encouragement for you today, is that you abound in his righteousness, you abound in his wisdom, but do not be taken in by the foolishness and the deceitful ways of the wicked, for their ways only are to satisfy self. They never satisfy more than their own self. And that's the problem with most governments today. They're satisfying self. How many promises when you think of, and I don't care what party you belong to, how many promises have you been promised? And you went, oh, that's for me. And it was never fulfilled. Why? Because the promises of the wicked are lies and deceit. There is no truth in them. So the next time you go to vote, I'm not telling you how to vote. I don't care what party you belong to. But vote for the person with wisdom and righteousness. And don't for, vote for the person that's promising you something for nothing, because nothing begats nothing. And wisdom begats understanding. Which way will you go? The choice is yours today. So with that, I encourage you, live the good life. Live the life that Betsy and I are living. We have seen time and time again, God step in where we thought there was no way, no hope, and our hope is eternal because it's based on Jesus Christ. And with him, there can be nothing the evil that set us. No matter how it looks around us, we are in his hands and we are protected. God bless you. Will you have something to say, Betsy? Well, I want to <laughs> sorry, caution sweetheart. people that when you talk about living the good life, it's often misconstrued as having a bunch of stuff. The good life is having your needs met. But most of all, having the contentment and joy that comes from knowing Jesus. Amen. And with that, my friends, we will say, God bless you. Live the good life and walk in his righteousness. God bless.
living in the kingdom, and I'm walking in the spirit, and I'm saying my God. Thank you. 